Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted a chart of coffee, folks. Haven't traded this for 50 years. Actually, yep, exactly 50 years. 1973, 2023. Yes, sir. And there it is right there, uh, making a beautiful Gartley there at uh, 156 a pound. It's now trading at 161 account, 161 uh uh, per, per, per pound in the coffee. So now, if you're in that trade, you would put your stop at your break-even point or even at 157 to lock in $300. Uh, the reason why I don't trade coffee, folks, it was in 1973, and I was trading at Conti Commodities, and market was all the markets were going crazy because of the Russian grain robbery of 1972, and uh, it, it was July. Uh, it was roughly around this time in July 1973, and I was long four contracts of coffee with about a $20,000 uh, open profit. And I went in and I gave my broker the order to sell it at the market. And he came back, oh, about two or three minutes later, I went to the, the lady's room, powdered my nose. And when I came back, he gave me the fill, and it was limit down. It was a swing of eight cents. And I thought I'd been cheated out of about $9,000, and I was very, very upset. And then I was listening to the squawk box, and Ivan Auer, who was running the New York Dex at, Dex at, desk at that time, he said to my broker, Jack, he said, uh, does he want to trade or not? And when he said that, I knew that I better take it because it was lock limit down, and it went limit down four or five days. That same thing happened to me in uh, Cocoa that day. Uh, that was just a high day. I just happened to pick the wrong time. And so, and uh, anyway, that's uh, that's what happened. Folks, I've been doing this a long time. And uh, I would like to say that I'm as bearish now on stocks that I've been since I was bullish on March the 5th of 2009. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know why it's going to happen. I don't even know if it's going to happen. But let me explain to you on some of these charts. And I'm just, I'm just a chartist. I don't listen to these dudes that tell us all this wonderful stuff and whatever it happens to be. I look at the charts. I try to make an interpretation. Usually I'm right. Yeah, sometimes I'm wrong. This time's a little different. And the reason why it's a little different, I'm going to post these. This will be done in the newsletter uh, over the weekend. I'm going to be doing quite a bit of work. Uh, to show you what I'm doing. I don't even know if I can. Yeah, I think I can cover most of them here this morning. Uh, but this is the, the number. I'll give them to you in one, two, three. This is the Dow Jones on the weekly, okay? That number came in at 45.29. We hit 45.60, uh, okay? That, and you're talking about really, really small percentage off. But that's a weekly chart. Okay, that's that one. Okay, the other one that is extremely important to me that I never trade at all, but it has to do with the economy and charts and everything else, is the Dow Jones transportation. And if you come up and take a look here at the Dow Jones transportation, you're going to see it's made a 38 week high. And you can see that distance between the A and the B and the C and the D are exactly equal, folks. And not only that, it's exactly 0.618 in time to the low that we made down here. This was 75 weeks down, 38 weeks up. And that's the kind of thing that WDGAN worked on. Okay, now we're going to do a few more of these just for a lot of fun, all right? Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Now let's take a look at the NASDAQ, which has been the big daddy rabbit of this whole thing. This is up to date. I just did it, did it a little while ago. And I, I know it's exceeded a lot of different things and stuff like that, but here's where we are. We came right up and went right to the 1.618 expansion of this beautiful butterfly pattern. You can see the A, B, C, D move to the upside. Okay, that's the third one. 
And there's a whole bunch of them here. The fact is, there's more than I can probably cover. <laughs> okay, now we already did that. We should do the next one, which is the uh, the E mini S and P. Where are you, little rascal? I've had you in here on my sites here all the time. And here it is, right here in front of me. And uh, you'll see here we went a little bit higher. This was done yesterday, but we went another uh, 10 points higher with all the emotionalism that's going on. The fact that everything is uh, wonderful in Camelot, and we have what they call the Goldilocks scenario on Wall Street. I heard it three times today on Bloomberg. Goldilocks. Who was the other part of those? There was somebody else in that nursery rhyme. The Goldilocks. Oh, yes. And the three bears. Well, there's more than three out there, boys and girls. Now, remember, this is my opinion, and I'm probably full of baloney. I know I'm full of salami, baloney, that's a totally different story. Now, here's a couple of other ones that I think that are going to be very, very interesting. First of all, a lot of this is being interpreted by what's been happening with the U.S. dollar. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the daily chart of the U.S. dollar. Here's where we are. We get up here and pull it up here. And this is the daily chart, and then we're going to look at it on a weekly basis. There's the daily. You can see the number down here. See that little number? setting right there now all i want to do now is i want to go in and i'm going to show it to you on the weekly chart and then as you take a look you're going to be looking at it we're very very close to something really big here in the u.s dollar remember just if a tad three weeks ago the world had to have the u.s dollar it just had no chance of ever going down and we went from the 50 percent level down here to the 61 percent level now, here's the one that's really interesting because this is the intraday move here of the of the dollar uh, dollar index on the, on the weekly basis. All I did now was I blew this up so that you'd be able to see it, okay? And I remember, I'm an ABCD guy. That's, uh, that's my I – I did really good in, uh, in uh, numbers there. And in, in the, when I got to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I did okay. But with ciphering, I was all right. But anyway, look at this. There's your ABCD part, folks, right there. That's the low of the day in the dollar index so far, all right? A perfect ABCD. Now, this just a tiny bit lower, another 50 pips lower, is the 61% retracement on the weekly chart. This is when we – this was a very bearish garly up in here, as we all already know, okay? That's why the euro has been so darn strong. But that's another one, and we're going to – it wasn't three pigs. Was it three pigs? I thought it was three bears. It's goalie locks into three bears. What are you talking about, Al? I'm not that senile. Get out of here. All right. Well, it was goldie locks into three Italians. Maybe that's it. Okay, switching over, we did the dollar index. Now, let's go back, and we're going to look at some of the things that we were also looking at this past week, okay? One of the things that we, we talked about quite a bit was the uh, Japanese yen. Remember, that's the one risk on, risk off one. So, ah, uh, why did that happen that way? Okay, give me back here. Right here, there's where we are. Move this up here. And you move this up here. And there you are, right here. And I'll get right back to the second part of this. post taste. remember we have Norman Winsky of Astro Trends coming up, and maybe he'll give us an idea of something big happening. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, folks, now we're going to take a look here at the Japanese yen versus the dollar. As you can see, uh, I, I drew in those parallel channels perfectly, folks. I didn't match them up. All I did was I drew the bottom one. And excuse me, I, I, I did the top one and then I cloned it and just laid, lined it up on the bottom. And you can see it, it's in that parallel channel, still bullish. The correction that we're seeing now is very similar, <laughs> let's say exactly similar to what we did right here. Remember how bearish it looked right there? Well, this is the same thing happening right now. And not only that, but there's a 382 retracement of that whole move. Hmm, wonder why that happened today. Well, anyway, let's just move on to the next one here so we can see a couple others. Since we're in the, the realm of foreign exchange, by the way, when they first started trading foreign exchange back in 1972, you had to have a million-dollar account. This is where Bruce Kovner and uh, Ed Sakota made all their money because they were trading with, uh, was it this, what's I think it was Deutsche Bank out of the Conti Commodity Office, and all they traded was foreign currency, mainly the, the Deutsche Mark itself. It was trading at 24 cents to the dollar. That's why if you bought a Mercedes back in 72, 73, all the way up through the present day, you uh, you were getting the valuation of the currency of, against the U.S. dollar. So that's why uh, those those cars were so very uh, uh, exciting. Also, uh, I think Porsches are made there, too. I never owned a – I've owned one Mercedes, so it was okay. I didn't particularly like a couple of Porsches, but that was back in the day when I was uh, – Young and foolish. Okay, now let's get on to what really is going to matter here. Now, yesterday, when we were here on the show, I posted this chart right here of the euro versus the, get this up here so you'll be able to see it, the euro versus the U.S. dollar. And as you can see in big red letters up here, there's the number right here, folks. It hit that number once, twice, twice. Three times. Maybe it closes above it, but that's a big A, B, C, D pattern right here. I did this on all of the major currencies to see where we are. And, folks, something big is getting ready to happen. I don't know what it is, but it is something pretty big. Now, I think the next one we want to take a look at is the British pound, and I think I did that one, too. I believe I did. I did, I did. No, no, no. Please don't tell me that. Well, I can't find the British pound, and I'm not going to worry about it, so it's not going to be a big deal. 
So anyway, that's what we're paying attention to here today. And I just wanted to give you a heads up of what I'm watching in here. I know I have the British pound in here because that's one of the more important ones. But it also went up to 132, and that was it. So all it's telling me, and I don't know anything about astrology or anything like this. I know we've got this big day coming up. We've got this big new moon coming up here on Sunday. Uh, I think it's Sunday, isn't it? No, it's Monday, uh, the 17th. And our, our guest that day will be uh, Stan Harley. Maybe Stan Harley gave us a date of December or uh, July the uh, 17th. That I don't know. And now, the bottom line of all this is the only position that I have on right now for the 24-7 folks is the gold. We're still in the gold. It's basically break-even. We sold it at... Uh, at 20, uh, 1963, and uh, we have a stop working up there at 1972, and uh, we had a small position. I mean, it took a small loss in the uh, Dow E-mini today, uh, right into those banking things. And of course, I don't follow banking earnings, and they were crazy, and we took a quick $300 hit in that, so that's all we're doing. But the one that's upset me the most, because we had a, we had a terrific week with the exception of crude oil, and I wanted to bring up to your attention here uh, what what was happening last night is I, I I found this pattern okay and I was getting ready uh, to send it out uh, right about here okay and so what happened was I got ready to do the video and I did the video just like I was supposed to do and then I went to bed except for one thing I forgot to send it out <laughs> anyway that's what happened. Anyways, a perfect. There's your perfect A, B, C, D right here. Look at look at this one last night, folks. Look A, B, C, D. You know, it's uh, it's really hard to understand why some people don't understand this, but you know, I guess part of it. Anyway, now this rally that we had back stopped right at the 382 so far, but that's a little early in the game. The reason why I don't have any positions on basically it's a matter of risk control for the folks. I do have I have a couple positions on that I just couldn't resist, and uh, that's that's basically what I was watching here today. I didn't even get any of this part because by the time I started my day, we were dropping like a rock. And as you know, I don't chase markets. I'm going to figure out how to chase markets one of these days, and oh heaven help us, because then I'll be really dangerous. And I, I mean that on a good and bad note too. So those are some of the ones that uh, we're paying attention to. We've had some pretty good moves uh, in the soybeans, but they're they they're given they're given quite a bit of it back. Here, I'll put put up the chart last night. Uh, this is one that gave you a quick twenty cents. I happened to be there. This was right before uh, I hit the sack, and I'll get this up here. You'll see this is the uh, November contract, and we had that move up to the uh, seventy eight percent level. Came right down here, you hit it exactly, and I bought it. And uh, when I got up, it was up into this area right here. So I took my profit. It's now back down into here. So it's interesting. We're still going to have some good chances here in the corn, but we've had a really good rally, folks. We've rallied 27 cents off the bottom in corn, which is a very unusual event considering it was ready to go about 30 cents lower, but it still might, but we're going to wait and see what the next pattern lines up. And of course, wheat has been acting extremely well. Uh, that's been straight up since the 78% level was hit, you know, last uh, Tuesday. So those are some of the ones that we're paying uh, very close attention to. Okay, now the next one, I have any questions? Oh, one, there was one question from someone uh, regarding the, um, uh, what was this stuff? The copper. Uh, copper has held up extremely well during this time because you've got the metals going straight up. Silver's been a rocket ship, and I do mean a rocket ship. Let's just take a quick look at it. Someone asked me where the profit objective was on the silver, and I'll get this up here to show you because it's certainly – it's certainly been a really big, uh, big win in here. You'll see uh, we were in the gold, not in the silver. But you can see here that we've, we're up now to the, uh, this is the, the big 1.618 expansion of a move way back here. Plus it's the 1.27 expansion of another move right in there. So that's why, oh, wait a minute, not 1.618, it's 1.27. It's 1.27. So around this $25, I think it's trading at 2508 or something like that. I, I think that's what it, oh, who's calling? That's got to be a pain in the rear end. I don't know who this is. Call from Steve John Hughes. I don't know who that is. I'm not going to be worried about that. 
Oh, my gosh, it's Jack Hughes. Oh, shucks, I ought to call. The hockey player, son of a gun. Uh, well, I'll get it a little bit later. Uh, sorry, folks, I didn't mean to. That phone almost never rings. It's my landline, and no one ever uses it anymore. But uh, Jack is calling me from Boston on the thing, so hopefully it's good news. Anyway, let's move on here. we got to have a break here. we got the wizard himself coming up, uh, Norm Winsky. So when he comes up, he will give us some great information. Remember, our guest uh, on uh, – Monday will be uh, Stan Harley, and on Tuesday it will be the Shane Man. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I think we have a caller in before we have Mr. Winsky up. Uh, Jim, are you there? Yes, I am. What can I help you with, my friend? Hey, Larry, uh, real quick, there is a um, there was an agreement, Russia and Ukraine, last year when the war broke out, that the opening up the um, Ukrainians' ports to export grain, and that, that agreement was supposed to be up for renewal on Monday, so that may cause some volatility in the grain market. I just wanted to give you a heads up on that before you talk to uh, 
I, Norm. I, I was certainly aware of that, and I'm basically bullish wheat, so we'll see what happens. It looks like they're not going to do very much, but who knows. But, uh, hey, listen, thank you for calling in, and I appreciate all the help I can get, buddy. <laughs> so thank you so much. Nope. No problem. We'll talk soon. Thanks. You bet. And now, without further ado, from Naples, Florida, is the wizard himself, Norm Winsky. Norm, are you in the house? Norm, are you in the house? Uh-oh. Maybe Norm is not in the house anymore, so uh, I don't know what happened to Norm. Where are you, Norm? I know it's today and today. Uh-oh. Okay, uh, okay. tell me what I should do now, uh, Al, because I don't – well, let me get this back up here. I guess I'll continue on with some charts, I guess. Hello. Um, there he is. The wizard is back. Sorry, Norm. What can we help you with, my friend? I think – I think I, I'm going to guess that a call may have interrupted uh, my calling, in, you know. I don't know what it was. Anyway, let's you know, start all over. Hello, Larry. How you doing? Hello, Norm. Go ahead. You've got the mic, buddy. Fire away. All right. Great. Uh, I was last on your show on Friday, June 16th. That was ahead of a three-day weekend. Monday the 19th was a holiday. I gave the folks these uh, dates that are hopefully on the screen now. I AC, If you see AC, that means after the close, that means something's happening either overnight or, in this case, over the weekend. And we had four points I gave you. Uh, so the first one was Saturn in Pisces was turning retrograde. And anytime we have Saturn, we'll be looking at coffee. And in Pisces, we look at oil. Then we had a new moon that weekend. And so anytime we have a new moon, we round up the usual suspects, which are financials, grains, and precious metals. And then the night of the 21st, we had something to the U.S. chart. So we look at U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and U.S. dollar. And then the night of the 22nd, uh, we have Mercury at zero north latitude. Anytime we have an important Mercury cycle, we look at the grains, corn, soybeans, wheat. So here's, now here's the results. Now, here's corn. Uh, there's your moon over the weekend of the 16th. And that was the day before a very important high there in the corn, as you can see. Uh, my mercury point uh, was off a day, so I had to count that as a miss. Okay, same deal on the beans. We were uh, one day ahead of the high there on the beans, and uh, the mercury thing was off a day. Okay, here's your wheat. Uh, the wheat kind of did the opposite. I uh, kept going higher on the moon, so that's a miss. That's a red arrow is a miss. Green is good. And then the green there, you can see you're right there in the within a day of that high there. And that was a big top there in the wheat. And here's your coffee. You had a little bit of a rally there. And we're just off of that little rally top there for our Saturn point for coffee. Here's Saturn in Pisces. That's oil. And you can see you, may, you were one day ahead of that high there on the oil before a big drop. Here's silver rallied in, right into the moon. And by the way, oh, we got an important, well, I'll go over that here in a minute. Got an important point coming up here on silver for Monday. But here we go. We uh, had a good top there for the silver on the full moon. A new moon. New moon. It has a new moon, right? Yeah. New moon. Sorry about the new moon. And then a big drop. Uh, gold did pretty much the same thing one day off of that top there. And now we're moving on. Here's the S&P. Had a little rough sledding here in the S&P. We were off a day on the moon. We were day late with our date there on the moon. The market topped on that Friday the 16th and then dropped, and we're out of range of this bar here, so kind of have to call that a miss. And I had two points there with both Saturn and the moon, so that's a minus two for the S&P. And then it kept going down here on the, on the U.S. point for the night of the 21st, but we did get the Mercury zero latitude point here. That was a day ahead of that low there before the big rally. Here's the bonds We're going sideways. So a yellow box is a pass when it's going sideways. We don't do anything, but then it rallied up into our a U.S. point there for a little short-term top there on the bonds. It goes good for a couple of handles. And here's the dollar here. Made a low there on the moon and a low again on the U.S. point there 
for uh, it's, it's kind of a double bottom kind of configuration. Aussie dollar was awesome. awesome. Aussie dollar, awesome. <laughs> there we go. And we're right off, we're already close <laughs> to that top there on the moon. And then a big down. And here's the British pound, kind of did the same thing. And there's your Canadian dollar. Not as good, only like a one day high there, but still had a chance to make some money. Euro was even smaller, but still had a chance to make a little bit of money. And there's a low, a little one, two, two day low there on the end. Had a chance to make some money. That's my measurement. Did you have a chance to make money? It's green arrow. If you didn't, you get a red arrow. And we're looking for some sort of extreme. If it's going sideways, we do nothing. All right, so the score on the results are we had 16 winners, 6 misses, out of 22 for 72.72% 72 .72 winners. Here's, I didn't show this uh, last month, but I always show results. If you get a hold of me and you get my letter or something, you would get this. I send an update this every night. I give you the whole forecast for the month. I send out the letter every month. But this is my sort of version of Bradley's. Uh, index, you know, what is it called? Stock market index. I call it a planetary index. So I changed what Bradley, I love this concept, but I didn't like how he configured it. So anyway, here's mine. And the blue line, I did that in advance of June. So it went into May. And then as uh, with the end of the month, and oh, actually as we go through the month, I update by overlaying the pri actual prices, this S&P 10-minute bars on top, and you can see that worked out fairly well. Okay, and here we go. Here's the future. We're now in the future. How are we doing on our time? Is the time commercial yet, Larry, or, or not? Uh, no, sir. I think we're I think we're we're okay. Just give me a second here. We got a whole minute, so keep going. Okay, got a whole minute. All righty. So anyway, here's what's coming up this weekend. The weekend of the 14th. Happy Bastille Day. <laughs> so we have uh, coming up. We have a big point to the U.S. chart this weekend. So that's U.S. stock, T bonds, U.S. dollar. Then on Monday afternoon, as you uh, mentioned earlier, Larry, we have a new moon in Cancer, Cancer, and that uh, we round up the usual suspects: financials, Grange, precious metals, and in particular. Because it's in the sign of cancer, which is a ruling sign for okay, silver. Okay, now we got to pay some bills. Okay. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in a stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, we're back and uh, we're chatting with Norm Winsky of Astro Trans. Please continue, Norm. Thank you, Larry. When we uh, took our break there, I was uh, the, uh, right before the break, I was talking about that we're going to have a new moon in Cancer on Monday. And anytime we have a new moon, we round up the usual suspects, financial screens, precious metals. And in this case, because the new moon will be in the sign of Cancer, which is the ruling sign for silver and the moon rules Cancer, that's a double whammy for silver. So anyway, you were talking about the you thought the silver was... Did you, didn't I hear you say you thought the silver was coming to an important junction here pretty soon? Uh, today, yes, sir. All right. Well, I would I would guess Monday, but okay. And there we go. So uh, watch Monday afternoon. and Or, you know, it's, you know I, I try to be right within a day, so we give it a day. So I could be off a day. I know it's sh shocking. And then we had Jupiter to the U.S. chart. Uh, it's the U.S. stock, T-bonds, U.S. dollar. And we have another big point. That's for the night of the 17th. And then the morning of the 19th, uh, that'll be uh, Wednesday, uh, U.S. to the U.S. Neptune. I have discovered that not only does U.S. chart work for U.S. stocks, T-bonds, U.S. dollar, but anytime the Neptune in the U.S. chart is involved, that could be a turn in the oil market. And then maybe the big doggy, big dog of all, as you like to say, the big uh, the daddy rabbit, right, Larry? <laughs> yep. The uh, we got coming up the the weekend of the 21st. Venus is in Leo, turning retrograde, and that's uh, anytime we have planets turning into direct or retrograde, that's usually a very high probability change in trend for the markets. Venus markets they have Venus and Leo factors. They have cattle, copper, corn cotton, gold, sugar, and wheat. And uh, now I'm going to talk about the S&P. Uh, the S&P, as of yesterday's high, I think it got to, maybe, I don't know if it went higher today yet or not, but we got yes, higher, yes. Friday, went, Thursday. What's that? Went two points higher. We got today. to uh, four, 48, uh, 45, 25? Well, I'm looking at the Did we make a higher futures. high today? Oh, yeah, made a higher high in the futures by about two points. 4560 was the high. How about the cash? I don't trade the cash, so I don't know anything about it. Uh, well, I think longer term, I like the cash for ch charting. Shorter term, the futures are okay. fine. But, you know, because of the premium and all that other stuff in the futures, I think the charting is better on the cash, you know, for the longer term charts. Right. Anyway, if money. you go look <laughs> at the, if you take last year's bear market, we dropped 13, on the cash, we dropped 1,327 handles. Here's your song, Larry. Uh, 786, which I believe, I don't know what your experience is. I think the SP likes 786 better than 618. I think it works a higher percent of the time uh, on your Fibonacci retracements. And guess what? That takes you to, if you do a 786 retracement of the 1,327 handles down, that takes you to 4535. Pretty close to where we are now. 
and uh, the entire down move last year. By the way, I just want to throw in a little mass psychology thing here. Did you notice, Larry, that last year when we got dropped 20% or more, it was all over the financial media that we're in a bear market. Now we've <laughs> moved up more than 20% from the lows. Nobody said bull market, did they? It's kind of interesting, That's isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. I really don't care much about the labels, but I'm just looking at it from a psychological point of view, you know. Anyway, the S&P favors, I believe, 786 over 618, uh, which we've already, we long, you know, I don't know, last month or month before, we took out that 618 level like a knife, hot knife through butter, you know, it was nothing. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, this is the last line of resistance a la Fibonacci, that's Larry's Italian cousin, right, Larry? Yes. And there we go. Yeah. And then exceeding 4535 by any substantial amount suggests the S&P's next stop is a retest of the all-time high at 4819, 4819, peaking at 4535 area could be the beginning of a big decline. So we're coming up to a big inflection point here. And as I said a little a few minutes ago, Monday afternoon, we have a new moon. That would be an ideal time for the S&P to arrive at 4535. And of course, Larry, I know it's shocking, but the market doesn't always do what we'd like it to do. So, you know, that would be, it's maybe a small chance that all the ducks are going to line up there. But if they do, beware, right, really? That's what they tell me, Norm. And I'm always, always wondering about that. So, Norm, I have some great news for you. Just don't let anybody listen because I'm going to surprise my sister for her uh, 80th birthday here on the 19th. I'm going to go to Terre Haute have dinner with her and then stop and visit one of my farmer friends and then just make a two-day trip and come back but she doesn't have any idea that i'm going to be there and i'm going to uh dress up or i'm going to be a waiter i'm going to take her order as as a surprise so i uh she's oh is that my, your your aunt's oh yeah cousin's yeah that's like right birthday my cousin's restaurant yeah uh, all right okay La bistro pesavento or something like that anyway be, I've never been there, be but I'll be a, there the like first time. Like a celebrity time, yeah. waiter, right? <laughs> there you go. Anyway, tell the folks how they can reach you, Norm. All right. There's my, for those that don't know, I got about 50 years of experience. I'm a former, I did the Chicago Ford thing there, trading my own account for about 12 years on the options exchange and the Chicago Board of Trade. I've studied all this stuff, GAN, Elliott Wave, astrology. I have a musical background, Fibonacci and so forth. And here we go, and here's how you get a hold of me. You give me a call. I'll give you a free tutorial session here. We'll explain some of these terms. And by the way, none of the things I'm doing here, it's nothing, nothing is over a fifth grade level. You may not know these terms. Once you learn these terms, that's it. It's real easy. So I can I try, I work at making everything simple. Einstein said simplicity is genius. Here's how you get a hold of me. I'm in beautiful Naples, Florida. You can call me 239 216 2578, or you can email me at nwinski at yahoo.com, or you can call me for free on Skype at anywhere in the world if you have Skype, nwinski. Underscore one. Looking forward to helping some of your folks, Larry. Norm, stay with us a second because I just posted the chart in the den here showing that uh, chart of the SPY. And you're exactly right. It's exactly at the 78% level. But if you look at it, on, you always like simplicity, Norm. But you'll notice at the bottom, each of the cycle high comes in 17 weeks. And guess which week this is? This is the 17th week. There wow. you go. Yeah, and I think that I think the trigger could be, as you've seen many times on these charts I show you, often the new moon, full moon, are important turning points. I think that could be yeah. the trigger there, maybe on Monday. We could be off a day, but I think that's the focal focal point. Well, listen, let's hope so. Listen, have a wonderful weekend. We'll have you on again soon. Okay. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, have a great weekend, and looking forward to your call. Okay. Thanks a lot, Norm. Uh, stay Thank tuned, you, folks. We, ha we have to pay a few bills here, and then we are, uh, I think we have to pay a few bills. If I got a, oh, we've got 36 seconds left. Boy, I had my clock all messed up. So anyway, uh, you you'll get all these charts in the newsletter, folks. Anyway, let's take a break. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. We'll wrap it up with wheat.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the December wheat on an hourly basis. You can see uh, the big ABCD butterfly pattern. Now, this is not a three drive because a three drive, you'd have to have a lower low here. So this would be drive one, drive two, drive three. But if this is higher than this or equal to it, it's known as a butterfly. And all we've done so far is we've had a nice 40 cent rally. We backed off today to the 382 and have snapped back really quick. But if we go back just a little bit farther where we were, uh, just a few days ago uh, when we were watching this thing unfold and everybody said it's impossible you know for wheat to uh, have any type of a rally well it's had a rally and now <laughs> don't do this to me here it is this cannot be it uh, what did I do wrong now I should put my resignation in when I can't find these charts and I just put them up and they just pop up. Anyway, it was a beautiful long, ah, it's right here in front of me. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Here's the long-term uh, weekly chart on the wheat. You'll notice it looks exactly like the dollar index, you know, ABC down to another FIB level. This is just like we're looking at the dollar index. You can see what's happened to the wheat market. That's what I think we're going to be seeing in the uh, dollar index here this coming week. Whether that'll affect anything else or not, I don't know. I see the Dow's getting closer to the high of the day than the low of the day. And uh, I uh, was going to put an order in there today for the folks, but I said, nah, I think I better wait till Sunday just to see what happens. Okay? Anyway, that's what we're paying close attention to here today. Folks, I am really expecting some really big volatility next week. 
And I don't see all these things coming together like this. Maybe they all fail. But, uh, boy, when they come together like this, it's just really quite amazing. You just don't see it very often. I went through so many of them that I, it's, just, uh, it's just truly amazing that they're all popping up around the same time. So let's remind ourselves that try to do something nice for your neighbors. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless. See you on the flip side on Monday, folks. <laughs>